Well, hey now, welcome to Fitz's Electric Bar. I'm Fitz. And uh, what would you like to drink? What would you like to listen to? So this is a segment I call What's in My Pile, which is, a, of course, a little takeoff on uh, What's in My Bag by Amoeba. I've always loved that Amoeba series, and um, especially people that I know. But I find, um, I mean, artists that I don't, I'm not familiar with, you learn a lot about them when they describe music that they're uh, they're picking up at Amoeba and uh, what's in their bag. I'm always curious, actually, whether they end up being given those uh, record selections that they make or whether it's just kind of a self-promotion for them and for Amoeba and everything goes back in the on the shelves. I think Jeff Tweedy uh, does one, uh, an old one with uh, his two boys, Spencer, and I forget the other boy's name. And at the end of the video, he goes, all right, boys, put everything back. <laughs> I really enjoy that. Anyways, what's in my pile of records in front of my stereo. So I don't think I've covered these ones off. I uh, recently got kind of um, hooked on these Mr. Bongo Record Club uh, releases. So uh, I don't know where I heard about this. I've been um, interested in the Mr. Bongo label. They tend to do some very interesting stuff. And these compilations, um, the Record Club, this is, I think, number six. And um, it's a collection of music uh, that a lot of it is, I think, um, Brazilian or uh, Central and South, Amer or South American um, and some really, really good stuff. Um, this one, uh, again, if you want to stream, what I would check out is Manny Corchado and his orchestra, Pow Wow. Um, just such a great groove. Uh, the sound is great and it's just punchy and it's... Uh, uh, I love it. So I, I love these kinds of compilations. I mean, there is not a single artist on here. Oh, I know what it was. The reason I got this particular one, which is the most recent one, is Sven Wonder is on here. And I have a Sven Wonder record that I really like. Do I have it here? No, I filed it back. Um, called Late Again. And uh, it's it's kind of like easy listening jazz lounge music. And um, I, I find it just a really nice listen to. It's, again, not too much in your face, but it's, uh, it's got a great groove. So I decided I would get this compilation, but you know, a really good compilation to me of uh, different artists um, contains songs and artists that I've never heard of. And the majority of this artists that I've never heard of, and you know, maybe half to a third are tracks that I really love. And that can lead to a nice little rabbit hole uh, seeking out other songs by those artists. Sometimes they're really just the one song that maybe you might enjoy, but at other times you can uh, just open up a whole, uh, you know, another world of an artist repertoire. And again, when the world is streaming, you can listen to it and see if it's something you might want to buy in terms of an album or two. <clears throat> so Mr. Bongo, Record Club number six. Um, this is another one that I love. Um, this is, which one is this? Number four, volume four, Mr. Bongo Record Club, number four. Track, I would say, to give a, a real great listing to, is, and it's just a beautiful little soul number. It's uh, James Reese and the Progressions, Throwing Stones, Kenny Dope Mix. That one right there. Beautiful tune. Just great. And this one here, this one is um, volume three. So they're a very fair price. There are always uh, two, I think, two records in in each uh, record club release, and uh, really good stuff. Now, a completely different tack. Um, I was reading about I don't know where, but I was reading about the Deutsche Grammophon original source um, releases. So this is um, hype sticker for one such a release. Uh, something that I, I don't know much about classical music. I keep thinking I really want to dive a little bit deeper. Um, I really need a mentor to kind of walk me through classical music because it seems sort of big and scary, like in terms of, you know, I, I can't, you know, Stravinsky just the writes of spring, just like it blows my mind, not in a good way. It just makes me sort of agitated. <laughs> so um, I tend to lean towards, I guess, I think they're called like nocturnes, uh, requiems, uh, a little more of the somber stuff, which if you've listened to my or watched my channel, you know, I like the sad stuff. Um, not that this is purely sad, but I bought this because I do know Ravel a little bit and I really like Ravel. So this is Debussy, Trois Nocturnes, so three um, nocturnes and Ravel, um, Daffy and Chloe and Pavon. And 
you know, these are like, I'd heard that the sound was fantastic and it's true. It's really the, the, the dynamic range, which you'd expect with a, an orchestra. And this is the Boston symphony. Uh, it doesn't disappoint. It, it is a, I, I find myself like lunging for the, uh, the volume because it just surges and gets so loud at times, but, uh, comes with a really nice little, um, it's got like, it's not quite embossed, but it's got that nice little quality. And this is, you know, basically uh, an original source. So this is all from the analog tapes. Um, very, very nice. And then it's got a um, sort of a restricted run. So I think this one is, uh, what is it, 2200? This is 1847, right down there in the bottom. So I don't know. Sometimes I just say to myself, why do you care about like limited editions? Uh, I definitely can get sucked into that. Um, but I, yeah, I wanted to get one of these and I've been listening to this a lot. It's something I like to put on in the morning and I've been reading a lot lately and just enjoying having this, um, again, no vocals. <laughs> so it's easier to concentrate on the reading from that simplistic perspective. So that led me down another path where I thought, well, maybe I'll get another few of these original source. They're not cheap, like they're 50 or 60 bucks, at least here in Canada. So then I was doing a little bit more reading and came across, um, um, somebody had mentioned that there is a Deutsche Grammophone Originals box set. So this is 50 CDs of Deutsche Grammophone. And it's a, it's a great cross section of releases of everything from Karajan to, you know, the great, um, conductors. Again, I really don't know much about these conductors, but I've heard of Kleber and Karajan and apologies if my pronunciation is terrible. Um, and, um, Kubelik, quite honestly, a lot of these I don't know, but these are, I think Deutsche Grammophon have kind of, uh, selected these as, um, really important releases. So I got this box and yeah, 50 CDs. I actually, there was one missing, but the, uh, the seller told me it was missing. So it didn't come as a surprise, but I, I intend to really dip into this. I've been starting to kind of go through one by one and, um, yeah, some of them are really grabbing me. Some of them, not as much. I've really enjoyed this particular one, a Dvorak release. Um, but you know, in terms of cost of uh, effectiveness, um, I got this used. I don't think it's in print anymore, but I think it was 125 US, which, you know, seems like a pretty good deal for 50 great CDs from the Deutsche Grammophon catalog. Other things that I've been listening to lately, um, I was waiting for the re-releases that Light in the Attic did of the Betty, um, Betty Davis releases. And, you know, the track off of this, which is, uh, if I'm in luck, I might get picked up, is just so good. It's so um, out there, sexual, funky, it's crazy. I think she's got some of Sly and the Family Stone, not Sly himself, but some of the Family Stone on this, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Um, she was quite, quite the woman, um, but I've been really enjoying this. But the one that actually I enjoy um, more as a record is they say I'm different, and that's this particular release. So Betty Davis, um, Miles Davis's wife for a time, and a real trailblazer of her own. And you know these releases, um, I don't know if they're still available. They're they're really um, nice packages. So you've got the the insert right, uh, or the the gatefold, and then there's a really uh, nice. Uh, book that comes with each of the releases and it talks about um, the history of of Betty Davis her music you know she didn't really get a fair shake I don't think and maybe she was too much for the record business uh, when this came out but uh, she's getting her due now that's for sure um, she's passed away but uh, certainly I think her legacy is 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 getting uh preserved and duly <clears throat> noted so which is great so betty davis um first one that i showed was um 
The album is uh, just called Betty Davis. It's just, I think, her self-titled, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And then They Say I'm Different was the other one. Um, another release, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but a band that I had on CD that I've been just loving. Well, I've, I've loved them from the beginning, but uh, Low and Things We Lost in the Fire. Sorry, I've got lots of ring reflection here, but um, this is such a great record, Dinosaur Act. Uh, Sunflower. There's just this was introduced me. This was the first low album that I got and became a, a real fan for life. Just just love them. This is my favorite record of 2023. Now there's still some time left for somebody else to come in, but uh, the clientele um, just uh, a wonderful journey. This record basically um, some nice instrumental. Um, interludes, um, some beautiful um, arrangements, um, really nice package. I'm not, you know, the vinyl coloring and everything, I always sort of say it's not that important to me, but I have to say I quite like that. I think it's a nice piece of vinyl, but I am not there anymore. Um, this record, I play it and play it and play it and it holds up and gets, you know, it's like those really good records of the past. Um, you first listen to it and it's pretty good. And you listen to it again and it's even better. And then it gets better and better with every listen. So I'm really enjoying that. So the clientele. I picked this up at a used record store nearby. One of the great covers, Ike and Tina Turner, River Deep Mountain High. Uh, classic song, but, you know, um, I idolize you. Uh, there, there's just... The whole record is is fantastic. The sound on this record is really good. Um, it's got a little bit of nicks and pops, but yeah, I got this for five bucks and even just for the quality of the cover, it's pretty good. It's classic. I can Tina Turner, River Deep Mountain High. Now the two, well, this one I've been playing a lot. I'm a huge Kurt Vile fan. This is a really good record. Watch My Moves, the latest one that he's done. Um, this is a little bit quieter record, some lovely finger picking. Um, if you don't know Kurt Vile, uh, I think it was originally in War on Drugs. Um, he has got a, almost like a sophomoric humor about him, but he's very, he's just sort of like an everyman kind of, uh, there's something about him I find very charming. And his music is uh, on the surface, very simplistic. Um, but very hypnotic and uh, holds up really, really well. I've had the good fortune of seeing him live a few times. I love, he's always got that look on his face. I love that. <laughs> My friend's daughter says, gross, he's gross. <laughs> but Kurt Vile, Watch My Moves, strong recommendation. Um, I think that came out last year, otherwise I'd have that right up there with the clientele record for my favorite of the year. And finally, Richard Hawley. So it just came out, I believe, with this uh, compilation, Now Then. Richard Hawley, uh, very best of. I've mentioned more times than probably I should how much I like Cole's Corner. I just sort of stumbled onto that through the streaming service and just absolutely love that, that record. I play it all over and over and over again. It's got such a great feel throughout. And uh, so this is a uh, compilation of all of his best songs, I guess, although it doesn't have uh, Born Under a, a Bad Sign, which is disappointing, off of Cole's Corner. It's really nice to get this on vinyl, um, having uh, Cole's Corner on, on CD. So um, really been enjoying this. He's got that, just that beautiful baritone voice and the sweet sort of strings and arrangements. Just wonderful. So Richard Hawley, Now and Then, another frequent player in the uh, in the Fitz household. So that's it. That's what's in my pile. What's in your pile? Not your piles, but your pile. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Carpe diem.